Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be practicing Kepler's third law. In order to do so, I'm going to be illustrating this with a question from OCR from 2016, from the last of their legacy papers. Just a little note that this is uh, not an official solution. Um, please check out the link in the description for the OCR's website where you'll be able to find this paper. Okay, well, let's have a look at stating Kepler's third law. Kepler's third law says that the square of the time period, so t squared, is proportional to the cube of the orbital distance, let's call that r cubed. As always with those questions though, um, we've not really defined what t is and what r is, so just to make sure that they get absolutely full marks, what I'm going to say is that t is the orbital period, so we can just write this in, the orbital period, and r is the orbital distance. Okay, let's have a look at part two. Now part two can be attempted with a really easy method and I would like to show you guys that trick today. Quite often what I would see, and this is quite inefficient, would be just to write down Kepler's third law. So t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over gm r cubed and um, then essentially using the information let's say for Phobos to work out the mass and then um, substitute or work out this constant and then uh, substitute that back into the Deimos equation. Now you can do that and you will get the right answer however it is just not very efficient particularly for two marks. So let me show you a much easier way. So because t squared is proportional to r cubed, we can say that t squared is equal to some constant, let's call it k, multiplied by r cubed. We know what this constant is. It, this uh, is actually just 4 pi squared over gm. However, uh, let's just say that t squared over r cubed is equal to this constant k, where k is just a constant. In fact, let's just rub this top bit out and let's just say that t squared over r cubed is equal to a constant. Now, every time some expression is equal to a constant, we could always rewrite this as, um, let's say, that this quantity will be the same in both cases. So, t squared, the orbital period of Phobos, let's give it a subscript p, divided by the orbital distance cubed of Phobos will be equal to t for Deimos, squared divided by the orbital distance of Deimos that's been cubed like that. And whenever we come across a similar question on Kepler's third law, we'll be able to almost instantly just write this in. Okay, well, in this case, we're looking for the mean radius of the orbit of Deimos, which is just really the orbital distance of Deimos. Now, if you think about it, we know what this is. We know that the time period of Phobos is 7.7 .7 hours. We know that the time period of Deimos is 30 hours, and we're given the um, orbital uh, radius for, um, for Phobos as well. So we can just directly rearrange for Rd cubed and figure it out. Okay, so my first step would be just to rearrange for rd cubed. I'm going to work with quite and quite a lot of detail just to make sure that I'm explaining this as clearly as possible. So what I'm going to do is just cross multiply. So this times that is equal to this times that. So tp squared times rd cubed is equal to td squared times rp 
cubed and finally we're just going to get that rd cubed is equal to the time period of Deimos squared multiplied by the orbital period cubed divided by tp squared now let's cube root this and we're going to get that the um, orbital distance of Deimos will be equal to the cubed root of the following expression. So the time period of Deimos is, let's have a look, 30 hours. So it's going to be 30 squared. We're just going to keep it in, uh, in hours in this case, divided by Rp, uh, which is the mean radius of the orbit of, of Phobos, which is 9.4 times 10 to the power of 3 and uh, this is cubed like so we have to be quite careful not to forget any of the squares or any of the cubes and finally we're going to divide by the time period of phobos and uh, we're going to square that so that's 7.7 .7 hours. Notice that I've not converted the hours because it's going to be a ratio. It will be 30 squared divided by 7.7 .7 squared. So no point in converting if we're dealing with a ratio. And if we were to put this in a calculator, we're going to get about 2.3 times 10 to the 4 kilometers. Now, just a little note that uh, I went through this in quite a lot of detail in the real exam. You probably don't need to give as much detail, but just to make it absolutely as clear as possible, I went through this uh, by explicitly saying what every step is. Once again, the most common mistakes in this type of question are actually perhaps forgetting to cube root this. So countless times I've seen this uh, rather than being cube rooted, I've seen it square rooted if we're looking at the distance. So uh, every time I'm writing this type of a question, I'm really, really careful and being aware that I'm likely to, let's say, forget a square or forget a cube or forget a square here, but essentially in Kepler's third law, because the equation says that t squared is proportional to r cubed, I'm going to have a lot of squares and cubes and cubes roots, etc. Okay, folks, well, hopefully this was a useful video for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Just a little note that in the description of this video, I've, um, I've included my revision video on gravitational fields and also an in-depth video of the whole of the gravitational fields topics. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.